In so many ways, video game difficulty can just feel cheap. By definition of how it's coded, a developer starts with enemies and design that would reduce you to a fine paste, before working backwards, creating a space for the player to exist, counterattack, figure out what needs to be done and implement it, all while keeping the pressure on. It's a ludicrously tough balancing act to get right, and though many of the following are championed for pushing you to the absolute brink of losing it, there are those that go too far, making you want to take a breather, reassess, or give up altogether. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game enemies that made you turn the console off. Number 10, Flying Drone, Returnal. Talk about the exact moment you noped out and walked away from a game. Returnal is one of those titles that walk the very thin line of asking so much of the player, literally pushing you to the brink of pure, utter frustration while giving you enough gameplay possibilities to potentially make it through. It's demanding and excruciatingly difficult, this 3D take on the bullet hell genre sometimes wiping you out through the environment because some enemy attacks can catch you anywhere, the screen often a snowstorm of laser death waiting to ruin your current run. The suicide drones in third area derelict citadel though, they're something else entirely. Barely giving you enough time to comprehend what's up ahead, these things charge right at you, dealing a ton of damage or just one-shotting you, with the only solution being a perfectly timed dodge, something you'll likely miss the first handful of times. At time of writing, only 31% of people have overcome this third area, with forum posts across the board citing this exact encounter on the stairs as when they put Returnal down for good. Number 9, Basilisks, Dark Souls. There's nothing worse in video games than thinking your actual save is irrevocably broken. That you've done something that means no matter what else can happen, there's a world state or gameplay affecting issue locked to progression. Enter the Dark Souls Basilisks, coming at you with leaps and swipes, but worst of all, breathing a wide-reaching mist that turns your character to stone on the spot, cursing you as a status effect. What does that mean? Well, your health is now halved. You can't turn human to get help from other players, nor can you get any of the benefits of being human, like increased healing from your Estus Flask. The many gotcha moments of Dark Souls are well documented now, but discovering these creatures in a gated off sewer area surrounded by poisonous slimes dropping from the ceiling was one hell of a sorry what reaction in 2011. Number 8, Shinobi Hunter. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Another quickie from the masters of Arma Head Out, Sekiro Shinobi Hunter often ties with the Chained Ogre as where a lot of people realize Shadows Die Twice just wasn't for them. Where the Ogre has legit broken hitboxes, grabbing you with its football tackle dive even if you're literally standing outside its arms, the Shinobi Hunter is the first enemy to demand you perfect the Makiri counter, an animation where you charge into its thrust attack to parry effectively. The real brain breaker is you're otherwise taught to avoid what's coming when this specific attack icon appears on screen, but here it's the opposite, because from software. Sekiro's whole thing is letting your muscle memory and reactions build over time to eventually nail this, but so many players hated being poked and prodded from afar by this super quick enemy anyway, that even wanting to figure out the process was too much. Number 7, Lynels. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Besides Silver Bokoblins being out of nowhere one-shot machine variants of otherwise starter enemies, Breath of the Wild's first, oh guess I'll die then moment comes with the Lynels. Hulking centaur-like creatures bearing down on you with arcing swipes and mobility in equal measure, if you've not mastered the game's slow motion attack window that comes from a perfect dodge, you're gonna go down over and over and over again. Nintendo really know what they're playing with here too. Chances are the first Lionel you'll find will be solo, wandering an open area fairly nonchalantly, letting you walk up and discover this private hell all on your own. Later though, you'll end up trapped in circular rooms with one, especially if you're seeing everything the final Hyrule Castle space has to offer, and that's when you'll either survive or give up entirely. Number 6, The Honey Badger. Far Cry 4. Whether it's Red Dead Redemption's Panthers or Far Cry's own random eagle attacks, some open world games with realistic aping food chains like to throw a predator your way every now and then. The honey badgers in Far Cry 4 though, they took the cake. Ludicrously feral, hyper-aggressive creatures designed to almost be wrestling kayfabe versions of their real world selves, they'll get all up in your face no matter if you're in combat or just strolling around the environment. Brilliantly, even NPCs and enemies will turn their attention to these badgers, firing wildly or collectively freaking out that a honey badger is carving its way across camp. 
These miniature wood chippers will put an end to whatever you had planned, but in a nod to how crazy OP they feel, follow up Far Cry Primal did let you tame them and wreak havoc yourself. Number 5. Armored Candaces Gears of War 2 onwards Gears' horde mode runs were such a capital T time for 2000s gaming. Introduced in Gears of War 2, the idea of tackling 50 waves of enemies with a set group of friends is something I'd literally recommend to anyone. Also brought in across Gears 2 were the Candaces, dodge heavy twin machine pistol toting a-holes that were just annoying to pin down. Screaming at you while their armored variants soaked up a ton of damage, they'd even bring back other downed enemies to keep the pressure on, if you weren't positioned well enough to flank and stop them. As Horde is all about teamwork, the Cantuses feel specifically designed to exploit chinks in your group armor, as they can soak up a ludicrous amount of damage even standing inside a Hammer of Dawn's beam for what feels like forever, any lone player trying to take one on would get wiped immediately. This often led to a clown car of revives and downs that ended your glorious run to victory right there. Number 4. The Creeper Minecraft. You have to hand it to Mojang, making a game about building whatever shared utopian paradise you like, but also including an enemy that even through a wall without you knowing, could blast apart a solid afternoon's worth of survival and construction. Literally, these things exist to slink up to you in total silence, stand there until you whirl around to see their soulless faces, then blow up on the spot, obliterating everything, often including yourself, in one swift move. Over the years, dedicated Minecraft builders simply won't engage with the modes of the game that feature these things, but for any of us feeling Minecraft out that very first time, they're a total menace. Number 3. Jackal Snipers Halo 2 on Legendary Part of me just wanted to include every annoying hitscan ranged enemy here, as from Uncharted to Spider-Man or those Anno Londo archers in Dark Souls, there's nothing more fun killing than being wiped out from across the map. Let's drill down on Halo's Jackal Snipers though. Not much of a bother on lower difficulties unless you play your card spectacularly wrong. On hard or especially legendary, Jackal Snipers became a meme, a shared infuriation from hardcore players as their AI would always get the better of you no matter what. It's precisely because they can be knocked out with a swift melee that those end of fight kill shots are so annoying. Chief's shields are already screaming for a recharge, you know what's about to hit you, but you can't close the distance or evade fast enough to avoid doing the whole thing over again. Throw in the occasional flood enemy with a rocket launcher and you're not making it through original Halo 2's toughest difficulty. Number 2, Sean. Sifu. The enemy that caused level completion percentages to half from Sifu's first level to its second, Sean had to be actively patched by developers Slowclap in the game's release week, simply because he was stopping the majority of consumers seeing what the hell they'd just bought. Obviously, super tough early bosses have their place, hello Ninja Gaiden, but the issue with Sean was that you barely knew what you were doing wrong. Closing distance and coming at you with a range of swipe attacks that need to be actively sway dodged on the spot, rather than tap blocked or parried as Sifu had been prioritizing, scores of players would fight through the whole level, get destroyed by a boss using a technique they could barely comprehend, and would give up entirely. Honestly, mastering Sifu has been the most enjoyable and rewarding experience of my gaming year so far in 2022. Getting its sway animations down almost breaks the game with how many enemies and bosses you can then exploit, but boy if Sean isn't a massive walking roadblock unless you really put the time in. And number 1, The Marauder. Doom Eternal. Single-handedly designed to be one of those enemies we talk about for the rest of time, an awful encounter that actually binds us together through sheer shared hatred, the Marauder might be the single reason only 36% of people on PlayStation have even finished Doom Eternal on any difficulty. Why? Because he requires a completely different tack to any other enemy in the game. Where everything else can largely be taken down through a glorious mix of tanking hits through armor, chainsaw health pickups, and a lot of gunfire, the Marauder can only be hit at all if you you maintain a specific distance. Too far and he'll throw energy bolts your way while unleashing a dog that's too close and the shield goes up while it attacks with a devastating axe. The only way to do anything is maintain an invisible amount of distance you have to feel out amongst the chaos, triggering a lightning fast attack that can finally be interrupted, giving you a millisecond of opportunity to get some hits in. Doom Eternal's reputation feels notably mixed, even years after release. I hazard to guess it's because of encounters like this. And those are just 10 video game enemies that made you turn the console off. Let me know your favorites down in the comments below and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.